Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the January Harbor Committee meeting. Um, as I always do, we'll just remind everybody that this is a public meeting. Minutes are being taken. Um, we are being recorded. Janice is putting us into the, the, the ecosphere, ethosphere there, whatever it's called. Um, so we're live. Thank you, Janice. Um, if you do have questions, please, um, Steve, just, just come right up and sit here. Come on. I'm glad you saved a seat for me. I saved a seat for you. Um, and uh, if, you have, by the principal. if you have questions, uh, please direct, direct them up to me, um, me. And, and definitely not to the harbor master. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and that's about it. We have a pretty full agenda today, so um, we will get started. Um, we have a I'm trying to think of how to deal with this. Maybe first item on the agenda is public input on non-agenda items, and I actually have one, which was just handed to me. So we have the uh, fishermen's floats applications, uh, which I've just received. Normally, you guys would all receive this uh, in advance, obviously. So we're going to pass that around. Uh, I'm actually going to. I think I can do this. We'll just put that on the agenda um, for. Uh, the end, the end of the agenda, uh, which will give everybody a chance to um, review those, and we'll we'll talk about them. So that'll be, that'll be item six, fisherman's place. These are the applications that we're gonna. Um, okay. Uh, do we have any other input on public input on non-agenda items? Um, Josh, uh, uh, there's a select board meeting on December thirteenth. I believe you attended that meeting, and that was where the select board discussed harbor fees. Oh, yes. yes. And also uh, commercial passenger vessel applications yes. that we had previously talked about here in the committee. And the YouTube for that meeting is truncated. Turn your not mic. All there. You turn your mic on there, Elliot? Um, the YouTube's not all there? Okay. It's not all there. And I heard that the harbor fees were uh, approved by the select board per the committee recommendations, but I didn't hear anything about the uh, passenger vessel applications. Yep. Um, do you want to tackle that one? Or the um, you're correct. The um, fees were approved as we suggested with no changes. Um, the commercial passenger vessels were all approved. The only change from our recommendation was that Periwinkle was given a three-year. Um, uh, license. We had suggested a one-year um, sort of a probationary trial, whatever you want to call it, um, and they, they opt instead to do a full three-year because there is the annual review uh, with the Harbor Master. Uh, so they thought that, that during the discussion, it's, they thought that was sufficient. So if there was a problem, uh, if that seventh boat proved to be a problem schedule-wise or whatever-wise, that that would then come up during the um, Review so obviously that's that review is going to be very very important next year um, for all the boats, but especially for that one being the newest boat. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. I have another issue in a, a select board meeting uh, in November. I believe the the uh, select board approved money for replacement of the day sailor dock and the dry dock, and it was mentioned that there will be an addition of a dolphin at that location of the day sailor dock. And I'm curious, uh, will the day sailor dock be the same dimensions as the current? The, the, day, the day sailor dock will be approximately three feet longer than it was in the past. That was because a couple of meetings we had with the day sailors and they said, boy, it'd be great if we had a little bit more freeboard for our fenders. You know, to get on. So we made sure it wasn't going to impede uh, that 86 foot dock that's that's tangential to it. Um, so yeah, that's the only difference. And where's the dolphin? The, uh, if this was the float right here, you've got obviously two dolphins here, and I had two chains crisscrossed in the past. But at low tide, you still had a lot of tension. So we're putting one dolphin right here in the middle. In the middle of that. On the outside end. Yeah, correct. So it held three points. It'll be very. It'll be much stronger. Uh huh. And regarding the dry dock, uh, who puts their dinghies on the dry dock? Uh, it's in the past. It's been f pretty much. I'm going to call them hardcore locals, people who know who know that they can. I mean, people will ask, "Can I put them there?" And I'm like, "Yeah, anyone can put them there." Um, 
But it kind of becomes like in the beginning, people will put their dinghy and they'll put their oars, put their names on it across saying, this is kind of my spot, don't take it. Mm. Um, there's no, it, it's not, this is your spot. This is a, it's been kind of working out. So will this new day sailor dock be in place for the this 23 season? Can you say that, can you ask that again? New dock, uh, float. day sailor float, um, uh, float be in place this year? It'll be in uh, spring. And, and, and custom floats uh, had, had a bid in, and then I had, uh, I usually don't have local companies that want to bid, but I had a local company bid as well, and they got a slightly lower price. Uh, it's Two Harbor Marine, who do a lot of the, a lot of the work here. They wanted to build and, and drive the pilings. They would have been driving the pilings anyway. So they were like, why don't we just do it all? And uh, I said, we'll submit, and say so they did, and it was a little bit lower, so they got it. Okay, thank you. Cool. Any other non-agenda items? <clears throat> All right. Seeing none. Moving on. Um, the meeting minutes. Thank you, as always, Mr. Peel, for your excellent meeting minutes. Uh, this one was a little more thorough than others, which was great. Back to the non-agenda. I, I apologize. Um, are, are we going to talk about the damage of the storm? Yes. Okay. So it is on the agenda. It's on the agenda in the hard matches report. We'll talk about. <gasps> I haven't had enough coffee yet, sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> uh, did anybody get a chance to look through the meeting minutes and or have any comments on them or changes from the last meeting? No comments. I didn't look at them, but I have a comment. I think they're excellent. Thank you, Bob. This is work. You didn't have to read them, didn't have comment. <laughs> Do we uh, uh, make, make a motion <laughs> to approve the minutes? Thank you, Mark. So do we have a second on that one? Second on the minutes, anybody? anybody? Bruce, thank you. Oh, yep, no problem. <laughs> uh, for discussion, all those in favor of approving the meeting minutes? One, two, three, four, five. Thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, Harbor Master's report. That's what Sophie was just asking about. So. Tell us, how's it going, actually? Well, we might as well get right into the storm damage, the, the Christmas storm. Um, as you know, it, it's, uh, it was like the perfect storm. We had an astronomical high tide. We had southeast winds. We had swells. We had water heights um, and dam water damage that was unprecedented. I'd never seen anything like it. Um, it really drove home to me while, you know, while I, you know, I got there about a half, well, I was there a couple times, but I got there a half hour before high tide. And um, it was just like mayhem. Was anyone else down there? So where was the damage? The damage was in a, in a few spots. So over at Steamboat Landing, um, l luckily the floats <laughs> weren't in, um, but the, the, pot, the actual concrete slabs that we put down for the tires, you know, um, you know, I would say there's probably about 18 that just got ripped up and, and they're out. The new ones that we redid. You ripped them up, or the storm ripped them up and the thrown them on the beach. Storm did, yeah. They're all over the place. Um, so that's going to be, uh, I got FEMA coming uh, in about an hour and a half at, down to the harbor. And uh, I believe Jeremy's going to be there with me, and so is Fire Chief. And they're, gonna, they're just going to Rockport. They're, they're investigating all the towns in the coast that got damaged. So we're going to show them. I've already taken pictures. I've cataloged it. I've said what, the, what I think the estimate's going to be to repair it. And we're going to find out soon if they're going to be doing out some money. So 18 out of how many, in a perfect world, how many pieces of concrete are there going down there? Uh, in a perfect world, you've got a th probably 30 on each row. Yeah. You know, so it's 90 altogether. Uh, it's about, tw I, I guess it at 20, 25, $25,000 to just for, and that's if the public works does what they usually do and in kind does the work with me. We get to get the materials and we do it ourselves. We could get someone like For Steve Ford who did it Five, seven years ago, and you know, just pay him to do it. Uh, but we'll see what FEMA says. Um, uh, I mean, estimated about three hundred thousand dollars worth of damage in the harbor. Um, total. Here around town property total. Just town property. Just municipal property. Oh wow. Is there any benefit of old connectors getting replaced in this process, or were they all pretty good? To, and they got blown apart. I mean, obviously, all the new the new area that we put in will have brand new connectors. Um, but are the others original issue? You know, the, um, it's a good question. Down further down at low tide, I don't know why, you know, if you look at the average storm, does it come at medium tide? Like I'm looking at this the other day, the ones that are down low, 
look almost new. They, they're not, you know, they're almost where they were when, when you first put them in 21 years ago. It's only that one section, that, that one area that just gets ripped, the very, the very up high area. Um, the wind doesn't blow at low tides. So yeah, yeah. Well, I, believe it or not, I'm half Polish, so I thought about that. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I, <laughs> I don't know why that is. I, I might try to figure that out. Um, but the, the connectors look okay de f further down. Um, Other than Steamboat Landing, what else was damaged? So, so besides uh, Steamboat Landing, the, uh, the harbor area, the, um, the actual uh, harbor office, you know, I'm going to have to have an electrician come in. I haven't even turned the electri electricity back on. I mean, there was water up to my calves in the office. <clears throat> um, you know, I remember my young friend, Bennett Cohen, who works, he cleans the bathrooms and he does stuff on the docks. He works for me still a couple hours a week. Uh, he's one of my one of my attendants in the summer. He said, oh, "Quick, close the door. Here comes another wave." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "That says it all." Um, so, but the end caps on the wharf. I mean, if you've seen the wharf, the wharf has been picked up, and now it's all topsy turvy. Some of it has ripped apart at its weak weak ends, where where they have connectors, and I've fixed before. Not a big fix, but it's still a fix. So that all has been put into my estimate of what. What we need to do, but it really does drive home the fact that, um, and I think Jeremy would attest to this, that we are really thinking about what we, what our steps are to rebuild that wharf um, and to build it higher, to, to, to pick a, to pick an actual, you know, spot, one feet, two feet, four feet, whatever the data. There's a lot of data to go by, and uh, you know, have some coming in and rebuild it. Going to be rebuilt completely instead of just put back together. Well, on this go round, and I'm sorry for muddying the issue. On this go round, I don't know if that's going to happen. Okay. Most likely, we'll take the money they give us, and I'll go with the highway guys, and we'll we'll fix it and primp it and make it nice so it's pretty for the folks to come back and safe and and then talk about a two or three year plan where we can say we got to start looking for a like a trout at a rock, you know, at the stream, waiting for worms to come down. We got to see if there's a 50 50 grant coming in, and then we got to figure out where we can get that other 50. Uh, percent from and and talk about we should get some estimates uh what we're going to do we have something that we're writing up we're going to submit to you guys in a select board in the next you know six months so how'd that compare to uh, the, the higher dock in front of peter Rots? well the peter Rots, it seemed like they, they, they did okay on that higher dock is that town dock or is that private that's private, that's private. um but their float gut but it's what is that like a foot about a foot and a half yeah, a little more than a foot. Yeah, right around there. Right now, essentially, the town decking is essentially at the tar level. Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. And what do you guess an engineer would tell us it needs to be raised to not go underwater in the future? I'm not going to let an engineer decide that. We're going to decide that. An engineer, I mean, unless the engineer is in you know, cahoots with someone who is you know, studying well, the oceanic. Engineers are just run reliable. <laughs> <laughs> they know what they know and they know it well. Um, what we, we have to decide as a community is we need to decide who, we, who we should uh, you know, listen to as far as the data they're collecting for Ocean Rise and then say we got to pull the trigger and do it. I know what I want to do and I'm going to say it and, uh, uh, you know, and Jeremy's kind of in agreement with me we're, and we're going to submit it to you guys and say here's why we believe this is the... What's, what's the, the gut thought of what the next approach needs to look like but, yeah well i was saying two, two, two and a half three feet yeah we're, we're 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 close i'm saying two and a half he's saying three should the parking lot be raised yeah it's gonna have to be the whole thing everything it's, it's gonna have to be project. i'm gonna be submitting a grant to the state um in march to um to help us um fund engineering work to do a redo of the landing bring taking into account sea level rise and storm surge. essentially all the way back to the chamber of commerce okay. essentially Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it's challenging because, I mean, look at the, the alleyway behind um, Baby Motel or Hotel. I mean, it's all at the same elevation. Yeah. Some of it's even lower than the landing. Yeah. Go around yeah. Towards, um, Which isn't public, but it's still there. So we'd have to want to work in cahoots with the, you know, Stewart who owns that. But let me remind you that we could, you know, take up the, the existing uh, wharf and then get, get a company to come in and drop granite on top of the wall pin it to what's there. By the way, two or three pieces of granite have actually shifted outward because of this storm. They're, ready to go like this. They're not ready to fall over, but it's a little discerning to look at it. They've definitely moved. They were not like that before the storm. We need to get them back in place. We need to drill, pin. And then my idea would be in two years, we, 
we lift up everything that's there, clean it, clean it up because it's probably going to be a lot of mess under there, a lot of, lot of uh, little ducks that float around for the, for the duck hunt they do. Um, and then just go up two and a half feet and then build it almost exactly the way it was uh, because it's lasted 31 years. I don't see why we want to go, oh, let's, let's think about this. No, it, they built it and it lasted 32 years. I, I think we should go right with what we have. And there's no reason we can't build it higher and then build some weird looking pressure treated ramp that goes down to the existing parking lot until we can figure out where we get the money to raise the parking lot. I mean, we can do that. We don't have to wait because trust me, this thing's not going to last another eight years. So um, that's my question is, um, what's the status for next summer? Uh, is, is it safe to walk on this now or no? Hey, I've got big caution things saying there's a few spots where this is literally a trip hazard. But besides that, it's safe. It's not going to, it's not going to, no one's going to fall through. Okay. Um, and so you're going to stabilize it or do something for next summer, I mean. For, well, for sure. Yeah. We're going to, whether or not we get FEMA money or not, we're going to lift it up and, you know, stabilize take the little, get hand diggers to get all that crap out to stabilize it and make it so it's, yeah. Yep. Okay. I mean, what about the... Start, they were going to start working on some of those temporary I, repairs the other day. I had the guys two days ago yesterday. I said, we're going to go do this. And Jeremy was like, no, 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 don't do that yet. FEMA's coming tomorrow. <laughs> let's, let, let's them look at it, you know. <laughs> what about the lower, the lower dock system, the finger floats and all that, the, you know, going out to the green boats and stuff? Any damage there? No. Wow. No That's damage it. there. No damage. I unpinned both the aluminum ramps. So once... Once the tide got higher than, you know, it was doing this. And so that means, that means the whole ramp is pushing on where it's, you know. So what happened was the, I didn't get to the fisherman fast enough. And it lifted a 20-foot 10 by 10 oak off its, it's got four big three-quarter inch rebar yep. that it sits on to make it. So it actually lifted up off that. It was kind of like catawampus. We had to unhook, move it, wait till the storm to go by, then we put it back in place so we could hook that ramp back up. But luckily, the only thing that got damaged was the uh, day sailor dock, the one that I'm about to junk anyway. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, what about uh, the, the schooner berths at the head of the harbor by Library Park? Any damage there? No damage. And it was a little, I don't know if you, you guys saw pictures, but the, the ramp had, so the ramp goes like this, and the, and it was up like that. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily it didn't because of the design of how it is attached. That's my, that's my good, by the way. That's thank you very much. No, what? No, please don't. Um, that that's that lasted well. Okay. Um, what about? I know there was one boat that went on the on the rocks. Um, yeah. Yeah, Scott. He uh, that's there's insurance going on. Uh, he's already contracted a salvage guy from Rockland, Charlie Weidman. He's taken off the batteries, the fuel, anything that could be a problem. And now they're waiting to see what the insurance says. It should be within the week they'll get that off. Uh, any other private damage that you know about, that you've heard about? Or? There was damage at the Yacht Club. Yep. Uh, people know that. Yeah. Um, the property adjacent to the Yacht Club. Kastner. Mm -hmm. Kastner basically lost yeah. his whole pier. Lost the whole yep. thing. And um, the long. It's right yeah. next to it. Well, some of it so was. That, that was so. a real official pier yeah. of Tom Miller era. Yeah. Yeah, that was a real pier. And it was literally like you could see some posts in the water or well i mean all the, the granite the, the granite stayed but it, nothing else yeah one of the grip wraps fell but one of the one of them stayed and then yeah, all the steel is just gone so what, ha what damage estimate um does that include the yacht club it does because that's municipal property yeah but it doesn't yeah. include the pier behind inside. the seawall on the okay. east side have you heard any other damage from anybody else homeowners or anything no um Great. Uh, well, I'm glad we got through uh, it. That was. What, that was what about the storm. stuff that was floating in the harbor from that pier that fell over? There, there were long boards there in the water. Um, there in the water. I mean, we should probably talk to them about trying to get those out of there at some point. Yeah. Those are navigation hazards. Why haven't they gone navigating on their own? Are they must be to something? Yeah, they must be attached to the. Yeah, I don't itself. Because the pier itself is sort of just sitting against the bulkhead, isn't it? I think I think it's just sitting there. Um, yeah, I didn't. When I was looking at, it, I was I didn't even check to see. I don't think. Do you think they're actually moving, like floating through the harbor, or are they just? Yeah, sort of yeah. There was one out in front of the yacht club, and there was another one along that east side of the yacht club where the pier was sitting down there on the. Yeah, Mark Bradstreet actually picked one up on his lobster boat. Him and his son did. Uh huh. I'll check to see if there's any more. I haven't seen any floating around, but. Yeah, I, I saw a couple long ones. What about Lyman Moore? 
Uh, very little damage. Um, you know, uh, the ice machine took a little, took a little float. Um, it became a floating ice machine. Um, we did have waves coming over the travel lift pit, which in the um, travel lift arms, which is the first I've ever seen that. Um, we had water up to the old boardwalk, but we didn't have water up to the new boardwalk, which was noteworthy. Um, yeah, it was the highest I've ever seen water over there. And moved you know, thirteen. The seawall in front of the condos between Lyman and Morrison. Steamboat landing. I, did, I looked at it. I didn't Everything's see, normal. It looked. It looks normal. <coughs> yep. I didn't see any. They were um, taken beaten too. Damage. I, I think that would be. I got a photo. I got a photo. Bang. A couple good photos of that. Just taken a beaten. Yeah. Uh, There's lots of good. Uh, lots of good photo and and documentary evidence. Everybody was filming, and that's really going to be helpful with uh, our case for FEMA because mm -hmm. we have to reach a certain level of damage before FEMA actually does something. So it was really helpful. Yeah, and it worked by the county level, uh, yeah. how the state handles it. So the county has to get to a certain threshold and we've already reached, the town of Camden damage reached the county threshold. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. I mean, the threshold's very low. It's only like a fourth million dollars for the whole county. Oh. Um, and then the state needs to submit that to the feds uh, or to the governor, um, the county to, um, and then the governor then will reach out to the feds and see if there's a disaster declaration. And if there's a disaster declaration, out of our zone, but I'm just curious, did the Rockland breakwater take a big hit? Yeah. Well, it was, it, was, it was no longer a breakwater. It was underwater, very much underwater. You know what I mean? And I've walked down there and you see these huge things moved around in the aftermath. Is don't, it still a breakwater? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't looked at it. They do have that webcam. I guess it was a pretty dramatic webcam <laughs> during that, that storm. Um, all right. Anything else in the harbor that we need to know about? Uh, you know, I'm still looking for a harbor clerk. If anyone who knows of anyone who's interested in that position, Liz got a great offer from Rockport uh, as the town clerk. And, um, you know, it's going to be uh, Marlene has totally just moved over and grabbed the reins for the while. And of course, Marlene was harbor clerk for eight years, you know, so before Liz. So we can at least we got a nice cushion there. But it'd be nice to find someone who uh, you know, wants to get, come into that position because, um, you know, we're about to change over to a new program for billing. Um, I have all my database for, for my outer harbor, my, my 500 points, uh, approximately 500 points for moorings, all my lat launches and my information. But, you know, it's nice to have another database that dovetails with that so we have a good management of the harbor. Um, and obviously, until we get a clerk. We've had no one apply for that job either. Yeah. Yeah. So I think word of mouth sitting down and saying, hey, you know, that's a great job. Who, who's interested? That might be how you get someone in here. That could be uh, the next. That's a full time job. It's a, a full time job. It's a full time job. Salaried or benefits, you know, benefits, everything. The whole deal. Yeah. So it's a great job. It's a great job. Plus, you get to work for me. Yeah. Well, we're not going to mention that part. <laughs> <laughs> Probably best if you don't. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, all right. Uh, thank you, Steve. Keep us, I guess, just keep us in the loop as, I mean, that's all big, big stuff happening down there. Mm -hmm. So um, if you would, just keep us surprised. Um, that'd be yeah. great. Okay, moving on um, to our, our um, next item, which is this, the report that we've been working on for what seems like quite some time. And I hope everybody has gotten a chance to um, look at it, review it, um, think about it. Um, what we have here is now, and what you guys all have seen, is uh, still a draft, but it is hopefully getting to a final draft, if you will. Um, so what I'd like to do, and the reason for this, just so everyone knows, the uh, urgency of why I've kind of been pushing this along is that we do have to get this to the select board because our work is only the first piece of this process with this moratorium. So um, we have been asked to kind of get it to them uh, as quickly as possible so um, we can, so that they can do what they need to do. If I can speak for you. Yeah, exactly. Right, the goal is that if, if this, go, this is to go, if there are any changes that the select board uh, approves that it would go to voters in the June on the June uh, warrant, and well, that backing up from that is. Hopefully, I mean that's the whole. Oh, I mean, I that's what I said. Yeah. Um, it has to go to the planning board too because there's changes that would need to happen in the zoning. Yeah. 
some yep. ordinance and um, the planning board would have to have you know their draft and, and a public hearing right. um, and everything finalized by mid March. Um, that's tight schedule. Yeah. I don't want to be a party to that. So. <laughs> I don't want to be the cause of that. <laughs> yeah. No, totally. So that's why um, that's why we're kind of, I wouldn't say we're rushing since we've been doing this for since, um, what is it, July or August or something like that. But uh, that is why I'm pushing a lot. So my goal today is to talk about it, talk about the um, report, and if we have actual changes that we want to make, we can do that today still. Um, but then at the end of this item, uh, I, I do want to have a vote on it so that we can get it um, to the select board uh, this month. And then as, as Jeremy and Sophie said, can, can move it along. another draft copy of that? Or nope. <laughs> uh, I only have mine, sorry, um, which I'm happy to share. I can go do that. Who needs copies? Copies of? Copies of. The, the when did, which, just take this one because it's, I know it's the most recent one. What, when did this? I don't know, which one Are you this? also copying the Conservation Commission? So. Comments that you sent second? No, I haven't. We'll talk about that. I haven't, I have not incorporated those since we got them last night. So. No, my question is whether they should be copied if people don't have them. Right. Oh, do you have those by chance? Do you want to email them to me if you got them? I have them. You got them right there? Yeah. That'd be good. I'd like one of those. Yeah, I'd like one too. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to do five of each. Yeah. Six yes. of each. We can use that. Um, so um, yeah. So we have um, through the final process reached out to the conservation commission, as you guys know, and Rebecca is here from the conservation commission and uh, the planning board, Ethan. Uh, both of them uh, were. We tried to get them at the end of last year to the meeting, um, but due to uh, things outside of anyone's control, um, they weren't able to make it to those meetings. Uh, I have now gotten uh, their comments. So we got Rebecca's last night and, and Ethan uh, wins, wins more of a prize by getting mine at uh, 717 this morning. So um, I, do have, I do have the planning for it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I do have the planning board, uh, I, I do have Ethan's comments, uh, and they're short. Um, they, uh, he does say he wants to note that these are his personal notes and do not reflect the opinion of the planning board. So the planning board has not, as a group, apparently, um, you know, discussed this. Um, so I'll just read these off because there's only uh, four of them. Um, did the committee look into how often the existing peers are used? If only used once or twice a year, if at all, does that affect the analysis? Number two, DEP and other agencies are understaffed and overworked. I recommend requiring an independent review regarding habitat and erosion concerns. Number three, I would be curious who solicited the letter from Mr. Hand and whether that should impact how much, if any, weight is given to the letter. That was that letter in our thing. And number four, sea level rise. Given storm surges and extreme weather events that are now commonplace, a two-foot height increase may be insufficient, but how high is too high before it truly does affect the aesthetic? I think we'll talk about that today. Uh, lastly, he says, finally, in early con earlier conversations, I noted that the review procedure having Harbor Committee review, Planning Board review, and then Select Board approval is unusual and unnecessarily duplicative and leaves open the possibility that the Select Board overrule the Planning Board or, in the alternative, rubber stamp Planning Board approval or denial. My recommending recommendation is to do away with Select Board re review entirely. Thank you to the Harbor Committee for your work on this proposal. Uh, again, those represent Ethan's, the, as the chairs uh, of personal opinions, not the, um, not the views of the um, uh, planning board as a whole. I, I copied those as well. I don't know if you needed his copied. Ethan's, oh, you guys too? Sweet. Ethan's. Oh, awesome. I don't know if everyone got those. Uh, I, just, I just read them. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, but we going to bring those in in a second. So oh, okay, awesome. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, yeah, let's send these around. Um, that's the email that I just read, you guys. Uh, so what I would like to do then, um, 
to keep this sort of somewhat in, on track is um, <clears throat> let's talk about the planning board and the conservation commission comments and how to if at all incorporate them address them etc into the could, could we maybe um, just <coughs> Just, just verbalize a summary of our draft. Uh, sure. You know our recommendations that way. Yeah, yeah. So this um, uh, the report uh, just sort of breaking it down. You know, we we do have a summary. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, we talked a little bit about the methodology uh, of how we went about our review that the select board asked us to do, and then most importantly, the the four uh, sections, if you will, the four criteria that we looked at, which was density, habitat, public access, and climate change and, and sea level rise. Um, breaking all of those down, um, we. We, we summarized, I guess you could say, with a few key recommendations. One being that um, we, ra we, we raise the minimum height, uh, excuse me, the maximum height of piers in the outer harbor only to eight feet instead of six feet. In the coastal harbor, it is currently 10 feet, and we are recommending that that remain 10 feet. Um, so when you, when you say maximum, I mean, they could actually build a pier six feet. They could, because there is no minimum currently. Right. Um, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and the other sort of biggest one, I think, is that all uh, new piers must be, we would require the new piers be constructed in a manner that allows them to be raised um, in the future. Should, you know, should we go, it need to go beyond two feet? additional um, or um, you know yeah, whatever four feet you know there's there are some um, uh, studies that have shown four foot sea level rise um, so um, that's the main thing the other um, the other big one one second Bruce um, the other big one is that we wanted to make sure that every new pier dock float ramp and other structure constructed in the um, proposed for the outer or coastal harbor, receive some sort of review uh, prior to approval. So by that, we meant, um, and jump in, you guys, if I misstate this, um, the if, if a proposal requires a NERPA permit, for instance, or an Army Corps permit, that is going that goes through a fairly rigid uh, review process. So we felt like that would be sufficient. But if there is a project that, that doesn't require such a thing, that it be subject to them, that the town actually do one. And, and what kind of project would that be? So it, it's, well, that's what you would, we thought, but um, this really speaks to, there were two floats in Sherman's Cove that were put in in recent years, one last year and one, I think, a couple years ago. Um, and those um, were, Determined, they, those never went through the harbor committee um, or the planning board, and because there's no pier involved, because there was no pier involved, it was determined it was a seasonal float. I don't want to over. I'll probably screw up the summarizing of it, but um, we wanted to essentially remove that and say no. If there's a new float that is, you know, a new float that is proposed out there, it has to be reviewed just like everything else, so that it. Remove that in the permit. Yeah. What I thought. I just want to clarify. Yep. That. Um, and so um, that's kind of where we're, uh, I think those are the main. There was, so that's three. There's one more recommendation. Uh, was there, went there those four? were the main ones. Um, page three, page four, page I think those five, are the, oh, and then, um, six. yeah. I think that's, Do you have a copy over there? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Uh, Bruce, you had something? Yeah, you would. In here was also recommended that we change the wording from mean high tide to oh right to highest uh, uh, astronomical high tide no it was no. to highest in, annual. highest annual, annual tide. right annual. Not, and not highest astronomical and my question on that okay. is if, if you combine that with an eight foot maximum are you actually increasing it to ten feet as opposed to eight feet? Well, let's 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 put a pin in that and talk about it when we get there because that's a great point and I think I screwed it up by saying it's astronomical. So um, that's the perfect example of something. We have more of these. Maybe want some. Can I 
Uh, yep, Bob. You're uh, talking about the if you have the federal or state permitting process, you got to go through that, and there's nothing we have to say about it anyway because they got to go through that. But we're essentially saying there are other ones that are meant to go through a process like that. But are we envisioning that we can tell the state or feds to review something they don't have jurisdiction over, or we're saying that the town office is suddenly going to have you know, staffing appropriate to do that sort of review ourselves? Because I was confused when I read it here. Are we saying use those standards but use our bodies to review it, or what? Um, I, I think what we're saying is, or what I intended just to say is, if it's not already being reviewed at the state or federal level, then we, we the town, needs to review it. How the town chooses to review it is kind of up to the town. So they, the select board um, or the, the planning officer or whomever might then say, okay, we would like the harbor committee to look at this and go through, you know, these criteria, which we would have to set and all of that. So there would be, there would be work, no doubt about it. But I, we, are we recommending that essentially the town adopt by reference the standards that would be applicable to these others and will do the legwork? Or are we saying that the town is going to make up its own metrics? Um, I, I guess my understanding, and we can talk about it, I, my understanding was that we would use the, we would come up with our own metrics, and but we would use the state and federal, what was that, visual impact, you know, the, the whole yeah. matrix thing we found. Um, we would use that as the basis for it. Trust me, we want the states, the state and feds to do the, the work. But right. if they're not, we don't want anybody to be able to. But I, I'm just, I think we need to be clear to the select board whether we're suggesting take that set of criteria and have our people apply it, which is much simpler than saying we're going to make up an appropriate set of criteria right. for these type of docks, yeah. and then we're going to do the legwork. Yeah, no, I, I was envisioning using Floats, any float attached by land, include that in the permitting process because we already have an entire permitting process that includes the department of the, you know, DEP and just right. include that. Right. Keep that's, it simple. It, and, and that's that's what I was going to say is if if we just added that um, somehow because uh, we came up with a name for that and it was attached. What was it? Attached floats. Or um, something. So if if we just added that to the permit process, right. then it's covered, um, whether it needs DEP approval or not. It's somebody's looking at it. Mm -hmm. Harbor committee, uh, planning board. So you're saying change um, instead of coming up with a whole new criteria and all of that, just change the dem the the definition. I guess it would be add of it, a float. Add it to and attached floats. Yeah. Yes. And then Something say like that. that if the state or feds are not conducting a review, that we will conduct a review applying those standards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Otherwise, you make it, it. If the proposal is that we're going to make up our own everything, it'll be too complicated and yeah. no one will yeah. do it. Right. I, no, I love this idea of just changing the definition. Yeah. I mean, why do you need to adopt the, those other standards? Why not just use the standards of review right. that you already have in the order? Exactly. But yeah. the DP and Army Corps review what they review already. And if we're going to review attached floats, in essence, right, that are land attached yeah. floats, just use the existing review criteria that you have. Don't add that other stuff to it, would be my recommendation. Mm -hmm. But I'm, my memory of our conversation was that we didn't worry so much about habitat, et cetera, because there was this review being done right. by other entities using other standards. And that's why we said we don't really care because we trust them. Right. Uh, and if we're not going to apply those standards, and we're just in a, I'm beyond my you. depth of what type of stuff we're talking about, but my memory was that we're, the, the state in particular does a very detailed yeah. review, mm -hmm. and that's what we were relying on. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, Core does too. Compare an oh. attached flow to just similarly to a flow that's not attached, right? I don't know. That's no. that's that's where I think we kind of got into a little bit of a circle last time. The impact is on the re is in the bottom of the ocean, right? Of a flow. Some of the impact, but I mean, there's also. Are you referring to the impact of the, you know, the gangway that comes down to the flow? 
A little bit, yeah. You know, because then that gets into the public access issue. You know what I mean about can you go under it? Then is right, it becoming got standards that review that in your current standards for review of peers? But it's not a peer; it's a right. But I think what Mark's saying, if you just add it to those things that are reviewed, then you would already pick that kind of stuff up, right? Mm -hmm. I suppose so. Um, hmm. Let me ponder that one. Um, I, mean, I guess, you know, how do we, or you guys, or myself even, in the planning office, review, you know, the impacts that the, the and Army Corps review? I mean, they've got the experts that do it day in, day out. You know, right, we don't want to take their job. The East Port, they're doing this. I mean, we can't. Right, but that, 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 that's the basic conversation, that for regular classic peers, it requires, and I'm looking at a part of our drafting about the NERPA uh, permits, the wildlife habitat, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to do a detailed review of that, and we're saying, cool. But the floats that are directly attached to the land don't require that, don't get that review. And my understanding is we just want to be sure that someone was, am I correct, essentially a parallel review of those yeah. factors, even if... We have to hire someone to do it ourselves. Yeah, but I think that's what Jeremy is saying is that last part is the problematic part is if we, you know, we want to require it, but we don't want to do it. You know what I mean? We want to require this work, but we don't want to burden the town with doing it. But I think we have to if we we're going to require it. We have to. I thought it was important so, enough to review and permit those kinds of things. They would be doing it. Yeah. Right? So, so that's understood. the ordinance in Article 6. Section six, procedures and permits, okay? Um, the first thing it says, any construction, renovation, or improvement of piers, wharves, bulkheads, um, that's where we just add attached, a, floats. attached floats, land base attached floats. Then it's in the whole procedure. And that just covers it, the whole it thing. opens it up yeah. to the whole procedure process. Yeah, I would just say floats and ramps. Well, Mark, what? What procedures does it? I keep circling back that so it, implicit in the current definition is the f state or feds will do their thing. As, and once you've checked off that box, you're cool with us, but you have to check off that box. If part of our new definition says, well, there is no state or federal review of these types of things, then they're essentially there checking off the box without any review happening. And we get to Jeremy's spot where he's saying, why do we need to do them for this? They don't really. So are we saying we want more of this review than the state and feds require now or not? Because if we're saying, yeah, we want more, then we get to Josh saying, but, but we don't want to do it. Right. So which is it? Well, see, I, I mean, we've got standards in here that address navigation, that address, Im address impact already. We, we, we do, and it's, I don't think it's our position to dictate to the feds or the state what they should review. I think if, if they don't have review criteria for a float, then, then we're saying we want to review it on our own. But... I don't think we can dictate to them that we, we want We can't dictate, that's my point. We can't dictate to them. They're going to say, nice thought, but tell it to someone else. Right. Uh, and so the question is, if anyone's going to do it, we're going to have to do it. And the question is, does the select board want to take this on? I mean, so we're probably spending more time on, I mean, how many of these floats are going to come up in the future anyway? But Possibly not many, but um, but they have, you know, it, we've already had two. It's, it's spelled out in the ordinance. I agree. Right? If, and If we add it there, it's spelled out in the ordinance how we deal with it. So we literally could, I think you're exactly right, Mark, in Section 6A, any construction, renovation, or improvement of a mobile vessel hoist, pier, wharf, bulkhead, breakwater, marine railway, uh, Float with float attached to land. Is that how we would want to say that? Uh, you know, we could let floats. attached land. land attached floats um, or other structure shall require that instantly. Yeah. Because then, if you read through it, it says the code enforcement officer. This is section six uh, C. The code enforcement officer will uh, review it all together and then forward it to the harbor committee. The harbor committee will review it. Blah blah blah. So that 
essentially what I think our concern was, with mine at least, with the last um, projects is that we never saw anything about them. They were just, they were approved yep. completely outside of Harbor Committee uh, involvement. And um, that seemed to, to, to be a problem, to be a, to be a, I don't know, a loophole. I mean, it was a, it was not a loophole, that sounds weird, but you know what I mean. It's it was not part of the ordinance. It was just, it just didn't, it was a hole that we were like, wait a minute, this is something we need to it's fix. temporary because it came out in the winter. I think that was the justification, yeah. Um, well, I was just gonna, wanted to clarify. So the, the seasonal flows that you're talking about, DEP says that if it's there seven months or less a year, then they don't issue permits for it. But the Army Corps still does review anything that's put in navigable waters. So you still get some level of review there. Mm -hmm. And I also think that your standards give both the Harbor Committee, the CEO, and the Planning Board the ability to seek, like if you thought some float was in a place that was really gonna be a problem or um, then you, you have the flexibility to get an opinion. And DMR and um, IFNW will do that. Hmm. So the DP Opinion said, on what? On if you think that there's an environmental issue or a habitat issue or, you know, say you think there's eelgrass there that's going to be Im impacted by the location of this float. Um, Inland Fisheries and Wildlife and Department of Marine Resources will respond to requests like that from the town. The DEP is not going to issue a permit for something they said they don't have authority right. over, but those other agencies are the ones that DEP uses for those things. And the town can send something to them with a question. I send stuff to them mm -hmm. ahead of time well, because right. I don't want to get the caught qu later, the, right? So I send The question stuff still is right whether, whether you, you can't just say we'd like an opinion on something if the ordinance does not authorize us to look at that and make it a condition of approval. And that's where I think doing it in, if we change the definition to Mark, in, yeah, right. Mark's point, then that will essentially give us the uh, ordinance authority to say, actually, we want to ask for that mm -hmm. review. Because you do have standards about impacts, right? and then you have the ability to, to reach out to other resources to get the answers. Or you can ask the applicant to do it and provide them information back from IFW. And so the, so the way it is now, they don't even need an application, do they? They just put the float in. Well, no, they have to. They have to get the hard master to, right, to okay it. Yep, and that, that's what. Based on what standards? Mm. Yeah, based on it doesn't say. Yep. I mean, much like and that's what we're trying like to. The, piers, what the float at the end of the pier, you guys don't review that float. That's right. just. A, Fixly issues that part issues the review of the flow. Isn't that part of? Mm, no, we sure. were we were review that. No, it those come up, out. They come out in the winter. The plans, that's temporary. It, it's, it's not under here. The flow is not reviewed. Isn't there a maximum length? Yeah, there's right. length and width. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. on the flow. Location yeah. requirements on the flow. And the flow is a big part of what the the yield DC right. and foreign right. area. But so, so getting to well, it no, it does. It does have um, the standards of uh, uh, they can ex the combination of vessels, floats, and ramps can extend no more than forty feet beyond blah blah blah. Um, well, that's in the inner harbor, but um, in the outer harbor, the float shall not exceed two hundred and forty square feet in area, and no dimension shall exceed thirty feet. In the coastal harbor, the float shall not exceed 360 square feet, and in no dimension shall exceed 30 feet. Does so it does give. Um, does it say what the, what, the, what the maximum freeboard of a float can be? No. Section 8 of the ordinance, and this is the old before it became an e code, so the old That's, floats and ramps section doesn't refer to anything in there about review other than that. It, wouldn't that, uh, Jeremy, be included under the Harbor Committee's review uh, under Section 6C that, that we, the Harbor Committee, does review? I think if you go back and listen to those, the couple of reviews that he did on, on the, the most recent peers, you'll, you'll just go back and listen, watch them, and they'll they talk about this then, that those floats technically aren't part of their review, even though they're mm -hmm. because of Section and Section 8B is for the outer and coastal harbor. Yeah. And I 
think that's the that's always been reviewed. That's what I would think as well. Well, look at the inner harbor. Combination of vessels, floats, and this is day one in the inner harbor. This is what the standard set has determined by the harbor master set forth in the city. Right. That's the inner harbor. That's the inner harbor. But, but B, which is the outer and coastal harbor. Gives exact dimensions. Of yep. Gives yep. dimensions, yes. But I would consider this, I would consider this our, like if we were reviewing one, I would consider these our criteria. Like if it's bigger than 240 square feet in the outer harbor, we would say, wait a minute, it's in, it doesn't meet the ordinance. Yeah. And I, I every, every review I've done Included the float? Included the float. Well, I'm sure that it would also, you know, like the DEP review, if the eelgrass was under the shadow of the float, that would come up in conversation. That will come up, yeah. So then I guess I would suggest um, you guys to brass tacks here under our recommendations, and this one is somewhat repeated in a couple <clears throat> of sections, so it's important, that we say, while the existing harbor and waterways ordinance has largely proven effective at managing the impact on habitat, this is the habitat section, caused by the construction of piers, docks, ramps, floats, and other structures in the outer harbor and coastal harbor, Harbor Committee advises that the ordinance be amended to include, um, how do we want to say this, to include land-attached land floats. In, how, how, about, how about being specific, to include an article I was going to say that to include land attached floats in section 6A, uh, the procedures for permits. Um, it, yeah, the full, it'd be Article section 6. Section 6. Article A. 6. Section 6A. Land attached floats in section, section 6A. Yes, 6. As items, um, correct. Yep. As 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 uh, <clears throat> projects that require uh, an application to the code enforcement officer or the town of Camden. Yeah, that should cover it. Excellent. Fabulous. Okay. And that will uh, allow us to essentially negate the rest of um, this permit from either the town, or the Army Corps, all that stuff that can kind of, that all goes away. It's, yeah. it's streamlined. So it all Great becomes yeah, included yeah. in that whole yeah. procedure. I love it. Um, Except that it's not, I, this uh, may fall under Bob's pet peeves, but uh, in density, when we talked about Article 6, Section 2C, 300 feet measured along the shoreline. Oh, I yes. Keep bringing up that it should be that the pier, no part of the pier, I, permanent pier should be within 300 feet of another, any part of another pier. The idea that if you're on a bend or something, that somehow the piers can get closer because we had to walk around a, a, you know, a crescent moon instead of in a straight line is ridiculous. If 300 feet is what matters, it should be the docks are 300 feet apart. Yeah. Um. You mean as measured along shoreline? You have yeah. Measured. Yeah, that's I my only concern. Shoreline as opposed to simply being no part of a dock should be within 300 feet of another dock. I mean, I would like to say that the, simp the uh, simpler is always better, but my concern is if we remove uh, the as measured along the shoreline, that opens up interpretation to someone like, wait a minute, is it measured along shore? Is it measured as the crow flies? Is it no, measured? No you know, part of the dock should be within 300 feet straight line of another Straight line. Dock. So now you're saying straight line versus right. um, um, shoreline. <clears throat> I guess I have some concern. Can you the current language and then and, and then do an and? No part of a new dock shall be within 300 feet of an existing pier. Within well, then you've created a total inconsistency. Will, it, will that cause any well, piers to be out of compliance all of a sudden? Well, there Almost are, definitely. anything that's built is that built grandparented. Yes, there are piers out of compliance with that standard. If dock. we create that, we're going to put some, some pressure on them. We would, Bob, where's the wording for that? I look on page two of our draft. Section in the outer ordinance. Harbor, section two. Uh, outer Harbor, you know, bullet point two. It's page 31. It just says 300 oh. feet as measured along the shoreline. I just have never understood why anyone thought that was a consistent 
ask Will, do you have any experience with this um, measured along the shoreline? The shoreline is what has always been used as the... Well, yeah, the ordinance uses shoreline and harbor line over and over and over again as, you know, given locations to measure things from, whether it's out, going out or along the shore. I, I did check all the ones that are existing. The only one that it's, that ends up being closer because it's measured along the shoreline is over on... Um, Sherman's Point, there is one that, you know, just using Google Earth, the outer part of that pier measures about 240 feet. From, from my, uh, what was Lawson Reeds? Uh, yeah, so it's um, right over here. Yeah, oh, no, so, not this one. No, not that Within one. In there. Right in, in here. So if you go along the shore, because there's a cove right here. Right. They got to the 300. Um, everywhere else, well, I was the actual also. along the shore measures shorter. And what the thing I worry about with what you're saying is that you could end up having to angle them in a weird way to meet that. I appreciate that. When it, when it wouldn't make necessarily make sense. Well, we're talking about density, so. Well, it's, I don't think it's going to change the, the density, though. If you look at what's left that's allowed to be put in there. It wouldn't, it's not going to really matter. It wouldn't change those four or five or whatever we can Well, I can mm -hmm. think of, I, I'm just, I don't know the rest of it, and I don't think we want to do this based on us today trying to figure out what imaginations are 15 years from now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you had something coming off of uh, this Lake Beach and what's that Dillingham point, mm -hmm. yep. I, you got enough strange angles there that you could walk along the shore and have 300 feet that out here is much less. Well, there's only two is go in there. One town. And whether you measure them from out here, yeah, that's 300 feet across. Oh, okay. The game is on their way down there. Okay. And these... And is this at the town beach? Uh, it's, it's the property just to the left of Lake Beach. Okay. I mean, if you have questions for yeah. my more for that. Well, and then these over I'm here, going, but do you want me to all need to come in the fish? No matter how you measure. Oh. Do you have it? Because they're. I mean, it just doesn't. Same size. Well, change. You have nothing to change. I'm not sure. This is a publication. And isn't one of those two on the town property? Outside of the. One of them is. Outside the jurisdiction of the town. We're doing residents. Well, yeah. I mean, I doubt the town's ever going to be yet. Sitting on foot. Is there a new permit I haven't seen? No. Okay, well, hold on. We're gonna um, we're getting a little uh, a field here. So um, Steve and Jeremy have to leave to go meet with FEMA. So we're just gonna pause just a moment. Um, Steve's just reviewing these fishermen uh, float applications very briefly. Um, he never brings that in. That's in the other harbor. Art's been doing this for twenty years. He's, I've never seen the guy um, three times. <laughs> All right, so uh, thank you, Steve. We'll review these uh, in yeah, a moment. Yeah, I mean, all these guys are have been here before. Okay. You what about apply. Kent Bradstreet? Kent's applying, but he's most likely not going to fish. As Mark said that he sold his boat. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to do that just in case, in case he something changed and he wanted to get another boat. But 90, 95, 98%, he's not going to be here. But he doesn't own that boat that he specified on the application. Correct. Correct. It'd be another boat that would be comparable if he. Had, but I, I would think he did that just to be just to make sure, just to cover grounds. But I, 99%, he's not going to even fish. He's done. He's tired of it. Can, can, can we approve a, an application for a boat that's not owned? We can do a conditional. Uh, we can do whatever you know. We can yeah. again. These are all recommendations to the select board, yeah. so we can Everybody approve with still conditions. Out, still on the boat. Yeah. Yeah. And he's saying he's going to run this boat. Maybe he's going to buy the boat back or lease it. We don't know. So, so we can do whatever we can say, whatever we want. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Um, Thanks, we can say whatever we want in our uh, recommendations or denials uh, at you know, conditions type things. OK, um, I want to get back to uh, our report here. And we're talking about the 300 foot um, thing. Well, can you um, can you guys bring, bring us into the loop? Uh, I know you're having a conversation about this um where is this will that's dealing him i'm showing him one on oh, Dill oh so this that's is the, oh, this the outside of dealing right and so when you say 300 feet would you measure it across from land land that would be the shortest distance 
or and so I measured well, it from I, the I end. Well, I would be measuring it peer to peer. Is that not from the first board to the first board, not 300 feet? Oh, yeah, so, it's well over. But I'm yeah. just saying, so you're talking that measurement on Dillingham Point? I'm talking every measurement. Right, but you, you'd measure it across the land, is what you're saying. I guess. That would be the shortest distance. For that one. Right. But I guess that's my concern, Bob, with um, changing. So with this whole document, I think we need to be, we need to be open to making changes uh, to the ordinance. But I think we also need to be careful that we do that in a manner that is um, well thought out and, and that we've kind of digested it all um, and the potential impacts of it. I think, for example, with the floats thing, we, we have done that at some length. My concern with, the, with changing in this report, that does not mean in the future we can't change it, but in, this, in these recommendations, um, my concern with changing the 300-foot measurement from along the shoreline to straight line distance um, is the interpretation of it. Are, have we thought through what that might mean? I don't, I don't feel that we're qualified to, uh, uh, it, you know. It's bringing it up, and I, I had a case in Tenney v. St. George where the float was in a cove like this, mm -hmm. and going around the corner would have been absolutely absurd mm -hmm. uh, because it went straight across the cove. So I, it's just... Yeah, I, I wonder Lawyer if it's drafting not directly, and, and this gets to actually what I would say about a lot of like the conservation commission and uh, Ethan's things. We were asked specific questions. Yeah, this is off that question. It does relate to density. I, I honestly don't see any of the points. <laughs> it, to me, it's very straightforward. If you want to make sure that you're 300 feet apart, then say you're 300 feet apart. If people don't agree, I don't care. I'm, I'm not pushing it and because yeah. we've got other things we need to talk about. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I guess uh, I, I think that we could suggest that there, that there be researched further, you know, to determine if shoreline dis, uh, measured as measured along the shoreline is um, still the best way of, of doing that, um, you know, of, me, of measuring that distance. I, I'm concerned about making it sort of a formal recommendation in here to actually change it. That would be my thought. I, I would say the point's noted, but yeah. move on. Um. <laughs> my grandfather ran a textile mill, and he had, he, I ended up with this. He had a stamp, noted RCP, and it came to me, noted. What did that mean? That it went in front of his eyes, but I'm not even dignifying it with yes or no. <laughs> So um, I think that um, uh, I think I guess I wanted to talk because time is a little bit starting to get away from us, um, and, and it's exactly your point, Bob. Um, I think we need to. We've been very careful in this process to uh, stay in our lane to do exactly what the select board asked and the moratorium asked only, and not go beyond that. And if we go beyond that, I think things are are going to get um, a little dicey. Thank you. So. Um, you know, in terms of, uh, let's just start taking it to um, first the planning board's comments because they're they're small, uh, and then no, we'll. That's not planning board comments. Excuse me. Correct. Right. Ethan's comments. Which right. It's a good point actually. This is the comments of one person, um, so I don't want to give him too much weight. Um, did we look into how often the peers are used? No, we did not. Um, I think that does open up a can of worms that I don't think we, I, I think that goes beyond. I wouldn't recommend yeah. anyone go yeah. into it. Um, <laughs> I think it, it's nobody, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. If they built like, it and they yeah. never use it, yeah. it's That's their, sort of, who cares? Yeah. Same effect on the harbor. On the harbor, right. exactly. Right. Yeah, DEP exactly. and other uh, agencies, we just, we've uh, beat that one, I think, um, to a pulp, so I think we're good there. Uh, I don't know who solicits, actually, all I know is the harbor committee was provided a letter um, from, unsolicited. From so unsolicited. So it doesn't make it. our knowledge, it was unsolicited. Exactly. Right. Uh, and then lastly, um, the or second lastly, the sea level rise. Um, I do want to talk about that. Um, and I, I want to talk about that as it relates to the Conservation Commission comments, because those came in the same thing. Two, two feet, four feet, 16 feet. You know, um, let's talk about that one in a moment. Well, I mean, the way we've addressed that is we've, we've put in there must be built 
in a way that can be raised. In a way that can be raised. Yeah. So we and have we're recommending raising yeah. the height anyway. Yeah. And I will just speak now that we've obviously had a lot of thought and conversation and discussion, uh, but the ultimate is that anything that is currently built needs to be modified. Anything that does, in fact, get permitted for, you know, however this all unfolds, um, that we just were strongly, strongly advising that the Harbor Committee put in its recommendations that it was adjustable um, right. and, and so that whatever the sea height rise is yep. in the future, that it's not, you know, we don't want to see more damage like we saw on the 23rd and like entire things floating away. Like we can move it up, move it down. And yep, exactly. Make them more uh, adjustable. Um, and then, then he talks a bit about the, um, Harbor Committee review, Planning Board review, Select Board review. I think that is very far outside of our lane, so I'm not going to. Yeah, we're not going to touch. I'm not sure the Select Board would look kindly on us telling them they. Can't yeah, what they can and can't do. <laughs> I think you're right, Richard. Um, that's why I'm not going to. I'm not going to touch that one. Um, so I, I think we have then uh, we've addressed all of Ethan's um, comments. Now um, Rebecca is here from the Conservation Commission, and. Um, while while recognizing that we only received this last night, I do still want to try to talk. About, no, I have to bust you a little on that. Come on, uh, no, no, no worries. As I, as I said in the email, it's completely up to me. Uh, but no problem. Comments, final comments from everyone. No, nope, uh, no worries. Everybody is slam busy this time of year, so no sweat. Um, you know, I think that the there is a couple of questions. The the overall questions. I'm looking. If you guys don't have them, uh, I might phone, but it's the. You have the Oh, could okay. we have Rebecca just summarize what what their findings are or what their sure sure you want to you want to do that Rebecca just as um, quickly as you can yeah um, yeah sure um, so I think um, you guys have actually been addressing it in some of the conversation you know leading up um, this morning is um, um, is in you want to give her a mic oh I have a big voice but <laughs> not that big not that big okay um, can I sit it here. Um, so I think that the, the conversation started with, you know, are these, in general, you know, are these four peers, potentially five peers, um, really necessary? You know, the, it was sort of the greater good versus the, the individual, just sort of generally what's the, um, given the density, the habitat, all of the other considerations within the particular structure and confines of our already pretty full harbor. So I think that was just kind of the overarching start to the conversation. Um, I am definitely outside of the 2015 um, discussion about peers. You know, the past, I have absolutely no idea um, what transpired there, but it, um, the notes say that there was um, discussion that there was or, or suggestions by the Harbor Committee to not have any new peers, um, and now here we are and discussing potential new peers and changes as such. So I think there was just some questions generally by the Conservation Commission. Um, but overall, it was, we concur with the, um, Ethan's individual comments in terms of a third party or an extra assessment. I, I support and I think that I can speak um, on behalf that our the Conservation Commission would support a um, review, additional review for those um, attached um, floats. Mm -hmm. I think that's really yeah, helpful I, um, with sediment and erosion control, sure, habitat, sure. etc. Um, and um, that we are um, hoping to um, again have just consideration for the overall climate change modeling and to make sure that things are adjustable going forward. That rather than um, while we understand the, the um, sort of the place behind that two foot suggestion that, you know, the reality is the storms are large and impactful. And um, I, I personally, as a frugal New Englander, think why well, build something for 50 years when I can build it for the 100 years. So, um, and I think kind of from a conservation standpoint that that kind of ethic stands. So I think overall, we're really just hoping to have an additional set of eyes as somebody who works um, in conservation, not just represents it from the board standpoint, um, sediment erosion control, um, sea level rise, all of these things impact um, what we do, how we attach to the shore, um, what we do on the land. You know, we, these things affect each other and um, we're just wanting to make sure that it's not just, um, you know, the individual 
landowners' rights, though they are clearly important, that we are looking at it as a community, um, the, the, the land resources, um, what's the pollution impact, what's the density impact, the navigation, all of those things, you know, that we only have one shoreline and we want to make sure that we have it sort of in perpetuity. So um, having that extra set of eyes um, for a third party review where we can is great. I know that um, we have a very understaffed um, and often not able to get to the field. Um, DEP and other, um, you know, at Army Corps, they're often looking at things um, with check boxes <coughs> and, you know, and while they definitely know their stuff, um, there's nuances on site that you can't always see through some photographs and um, a few field reports. So um, that we just want to be sure that we're doing the right thing. Yep. On a Bruce. Okay. What do, you, what do you mean when you say additional set of eyes? I mean, the that, that, the floats with the catch floats in the permitting process? Is so the third, so like having that third party. So usually a third party, um, whether it's, so if you guys had. Um, what are the first two parties? Well, you're having the reviews done. Essentially, you're going through the permitting process with um, Army Corps or uh, the NERPA. Yeah, exactly, or and DEP. So and third? the third party review is um, is an independently hired or um, requested, or even if the Harbor Committee went on site and, and took a look and, and said, yes, this seems to shake out. Um, you know, when I started. Well, they, we, we do. I mean, right. we, have, we, we have site visits on these applications, right. and the planning board also. Right, and, and so I think for the, the, that it was important to recognize with, you know, those right. attached um, floats that you, this would be another opportunity to get those, that extra set of eyes mm -hmm. on it, and I think that's really important. I think, um, is it, thank you. Um, uh, I, I, um, I think in terms of uh, the, I think those are all uh, excellent comments, Rebecca, and I do appreciate you guys sort of thinking about this because I know you've given given it a fair amount of thought. Um, I think that we, again, at the Harbor Committee level, are trying to be very careful to uh, strike a balance on this. And, you know, in terms of we are we do recognize the um, private property owners' rights uh, in the outer and coastal harbor, um, and. We're trying to balance that with also the the greater good, as you called it, um, and uh, yeah, what can we do that will serve everyone and protect everyone? Um, I think that um, in terms of your your you know specific comments, um, I'm not going to really touch the 2015 um, because I did with the select board when they when they tasked us with this in that that was a completely different harbor committee and a completely different planning board and actually a completely different select board at that time. So it's sort of history. Um, so uh, to your specific question, what has changed? Everything has changed. So um, that's why we're <laughs> that's why we're here. Um, so um, but I, I do think that, you know, we were just talking a minute ago about the heights and I be, to be perfectly candid, I don't think that I am qualified to determine uh, the, the exact right height uh, of what the number should be. And that's why I think it's so important that we put in this recommendation that these things be movable so that, um, uh, that they recognize that smarter people will prevail. Uh, and that recognizing, because there are studies that show four feet uh, over 100 years, absolutely. Um, there are others that don't. You know what I mean? And so I'm not going to say that four feet's the right number. Um, we all saw what happened on the 23rd. So I think we can all accept that. Um, uh, I, I do believe that the uh, future peers need to be held to a higher standard than, than the existing uh, I mean, six I'd foot. I'd just foot. like to point out that, I mean, and there's another aspect to that because, like you said, everything, uh, one thing affects another thing. So when you raise the height of the peers, you also increase the angle of the ramp yeah, yeah. because you can only go out so far. So, you know, it's, it's a balancing act. So, so, and that's why it's, it's important just to be able to adjust it in the future. Yeah, 100%. How um, much of the damage that was caused on the 23rd was a result of storm surge? And how much of it was a result of sea level rise? They are two very mm -hmm. distinct yeah. things. Mm -hmm. And we can't, and can't continue to lump them together and say, <clears throat> you know. I, I mean, the assessment for the harbor is very, I mean, it, it, 
what we understand is that waves are much more damaging to our harbor right. yeah. and the much higher mitigation, risk. Mitigation, mitigation for, for surge yes. is a completely different it's issue It's going to be addressed <clears throat> by a breakwater. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I made a note in the report that asking you to put a, um, a source for the four feet increase mm -hmm. due to sea level rise over 100 years because the estimates, I've, I've read everything. And, and there, there's a big difference. They range from like three centimeters, you know, yeah. over 100 years to four feet. Right. So, so that makes it very hard to model for it. And, and everybody has their model and everybody thinks that the model is right. So, but I, I do think that in the case of the harbor, the, the, the wave action and <clears throat> mitigating the wave action and yes. storm surge, that's our most immediate risk. Mm -hmm. That sea level rise, especially given the fact that we're on granite soil also, so we're not on mud or sand, which has other consequences on the, on the shore, um, that's, that that's, puts us in a different category. We're not Florida. And the, the fact is, <laughs> the fact is, everybody's got a theory on sea level rise, but nobody knows. Yeah. You know, so. So what we know is that we model differently. Even if you take, if you take the, the east coast of the U.S., you're going to have a different model every 100 miles, basically, because of the geographical differences, because of the, because of the jet stream, because of all kinds of stuff. So you cannot say. In the U.S., it's going to rise by four feet. It's, well, so I we mean, really need to understand locally how climate change is affecting sea level rise in the harbor or wave action or all those things. Right. But there's no template. And for example, you know, I've, I've asked the question, okay, if you have two-foot sea level rise, does that also raise your low tide? Right. Right. Oh, well, we never looked at that. We don't know. So it's like, you, you, you know, what's happening? Yeah. No, no, it's, it's, so it's, it's moving pieces. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Bruce. I had another, about, about raising the docks, is that there's another component, and that's navigation. Mm -hmm. I remember, I just want to yeah. think about that, because at, if you're six feet above the annual highest tide, you can navigate under it with a kayak or a canoe, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just doing it for climate change. Mm -hmm. That's all. Just you have to yeah. keep in mind both, right. both things. I think we hit the right approach of having a, some rise and some adaptability. And the fact is, all of the things that we're talking about, whether it's the parking lot or stone bulkheads or the breakwaters or pier platforms, are different. And the fact is. No pier platform built today is going to be sitting on that pier 100 years from now. So they're going to have to replace it at some point, and then the facts will be on the ground will be better known, and they'll adapt to it. So I think that we've, we've sort of looked down the road and see, well, two feet, that's a pretty safe bet. Uh, and it, so that's why we're raising it. And then having the adaptability, that which may never be used, or it might be used. So. I, I, I think on that part of the, the comments, and I just think we've already done it. In terms, the one thing I did want to say about the Conservation Commission in particular, and I can't remember whether Ethan's also hinting at this, but the, I didn't feel that it was part of our assignment to discuss whether we should have any more peers. Because I think that, that I, I, the, what I would take issue is it's not private property owner rights. <clears throat> they don't actually have rights on the public space. No. So if the town wanted to say, we're not having any moorings in Camden Harbor, yeah. they could do it. Yeah. Nobody would. And so if the select board said, let's take a big, go back the seven years to 2015, or eight years now, uh, you know, that was a legitimate thought. And we're going to give, we're going to have a uh, vote on whether to eliminate all private uh, peers uh, or on the Lyman Morse thing. There's, there's a very legitimate question of what do we want the harbor to look like? Uh, but that wasn't what we were That's asked to get into. Uh, so I'm not expressing yep. whether I would agree. I don't, 
I'm a little agnostic about how much these would or wouldn't and what it should look like, but it wasn't our assignment. Yep. I guess that, I think that's my main thing is that uh, the, I think we've done our assignment um, with this, and I don't want to do uh, other classes' assignments. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, Elliot. Um, in uh, uh, last week's uh, Camden Herald, December 29th, uh, Allison McKellar had an op ed, and then she makes a statement. Uh, uh, she describes private pier at property next to the yacht club. We've all watched bits and pieces falling off this pier for years. Um, in uh, Rebecca's document under density, she uh, recommends it stated require uh, repair. Uh, well, I'm not quite sure, not clear. On it. Um, be inspected. The point is to be inspected by a non-stakeholder third party. Uh, both of these uh, 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 address the condition of peers. Um, are, are we going to make any recommendation about peers having to be maintained? No, I think that's condition? part of that's part of the permitting process and specifically the um, planning board approval process and. Um, uh, the planning offices, as with any structure in, in the town of Camden, um, has to be maintained to a point. And if it is not, then eventually it becomes, um, I forget what it's called, a derelict or something. There's some term for it. Um, and so, again, speaking to our um, lane, I don't think that's part of our assignment. Um, so, no, I don't think that, we're, that we would address that. So does the town act on decrepit, falling down land structures? Yes, it does. Eventually they become, um, yep, they do. They become a hazard yeah. and um, there's a whole, there is a whole procedure yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. They get pretty derelict before. They get pretty, you know, yeah. which I mean, as they should. Um, so I want to time. Is that in the zoning ordinance? Um, I don't actually know. I doubt should. it. Yeah. I, don't I, don't know. Know. I, I just tried to think where. It is somewhere, though, because, I mean, it's happened. Think where they. Uh, state statute. It might be. I mean, it's happened. I think that's probably why the tannery came down eventually. Um, so, um, okay, time is kind of a wasting. So, um, I did one thing that I wanted to ra uh, talk about because um, you guys raised it, and I think it was a really good call. Um, we had talked about changing uh, highest annual tide as the benchmark rather than meaning mean high water. Um, not highest astronomical tide, that is a type of typo on my part. Um, Unfortunately, they're the same acronyms. Yes, they are. Um, that one sort of came up at the end. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't have a lot of discussion about the highest annual tide versus mean high water. What, what page are you on? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on page five, uh, um, public access. Recommendation. recommendation. We climate said climate change sea level rise. Decision. The Harbor Committee recommends the ordinance use the highest should be annual tide as the benchmark for sea level rather than current standard of mean high water. And the ordinance also has numerous references to mean high water right. and mean low water. Yeah. And I presume if there's a highest annual tide, it's, it seems likely there's a lowest annual tide somewhere too, but mm -hmm. that's to some degree, a less important number, but... Yeah. I have what a, are these tied to? Uh, these are tied to NOAA's... Um, now we're definitely getting outside my realm of expertise. Well, I guess but. that was the sec two questions. Who defined... Where do we get that number uh, that is not off someone's, you know, memory bank? It's yeah. official government stat. It's NOAA. Yeah, it's, it is NOAA. A NOAA yeah. it's a NOAA term. And... Uh, and what do they actually mean? And then what are we queuing that? What's the purpose of changing the definition? Bruce. Uh, I, I'm sorry, before you answer the question, the one, my one problem with highest annual tide is it changes every year. It's different every year. I think it's actually a um, computation. It's an average over some period. Yeah, over 19 years or something okay. like that. Um, and that, I think, is actually the benefit of it is that it is reviewed uh, I think it's every 20 years mean, by mean NOAA. Mean high water, I think, is 19 years. Is that the 19-year one? And okay. I think, you know. Highest annual tide is, um, I'll, I'll be honest. Annual tide may also, yeah. And, yeah, I'll be honest, I don't feel. Google could be a real help here. <laughs> um, this was a suggestion that was made. I don't think we've researched this. 
enough. enough. And I, I do fear the impacts, I think, that you're referencing in that everything in the ordinance is tied to mean high water. So um, if we change highest annual tide to mean, mean high water to any, highest annual tide, the impacts are going to be large. And that was part of my question. So if, if we're changing it, what is it that we think we're achieving by doing that? Is it setting the, the platform height or something else or that, you know, no, I think it's what, a, why I think are it's, we? Yeah, I think it's a actually just a um, more, I believe that it is a more frequently updated and revised number uh, benchmark no, by right. NOAA. That's the benefit of it over well, me. I, I, I get that. But the question is, so what relevance, if I'm an applicant, what relevance does it have to my application? Well, that where, where, are you, where are you measuring from? Where you uh, measure, yeah. How do you appear? Yeah. Which right. data? The, is that really the only important part of it? Will, Will had, a, had a reason for it. I yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't great. So I would suggest uh, that we strike that recommendation uh, from this document. I don't I would agree. feel I don't feel great about it. So um, we don't want you guys, to mean at different feet or a couple spot. of inches. Yeah. Exactly. There's too many unknowns that I'm. Everything else we've sure. we've researched and uh, talked about it at some length, and I don't. That one I was like, eh, I don't like this. So okay, uh, everybody is everybody fine with that? Okay. Any other? Does that present an issue though? That is worthy of consideration. I think it might be worthy of consideration from the town, but it would be across all platforms and, and yeah. divisions. So meaning the planning board would need to be looking at it because they do look at mean high water as well because they are the uh, above the high water mark. Um, so it's a bigger it's a bigger topic than we have. So recommendation on page five is going to be one sentence. Yes, correct. And it's all going to be relative to mean high water. You can just find out what the mean average is. Exactly. Any other, because we do have a couple of other things I want to get to before we well, close up today. The last recommendation was yep. change it to eight feet minimum, right? Yes. Eight feet, eight feet um, maximum. 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 <laughs> yep, the height Very point. big difference. Very big difference. Right, yeah. now, yeah. right now it's six feet. Six feet. But we're, are we also recommending a six feet minimum? We're not recommending a minimum. Okay. Currently. We do not have a minimum. I I and it, it. Um, we did have that conversation. We had that conversation, but I think we, we eventually we struck it feeling that no one, and this was Will comment, I think it was a good one. No one's going to want to build something that is washable, washable, that is too low. They, um, you know, and then if they did, they would do so at their peril and be subject to all the uh, standards of, of was, demolition. Was it in an earlier draft? I think it was in an oh, early, okay. a, a very early one. Enough. Okay, good. Elliot. I like it. Um, uh, uh, when I was reviewing these documents, I was thinking back to our committee reviews of peer applications. And I recall there being some confusion about the permit approval process. And I agree. And, uh, and that was referenced in, uh, I think, Ethan's uh, thing. Again, not our, um, not, our, not our lane, meaning we are tasked by the select board as an advisory committee with essentially doing what they ask, you know, giving, they, we are, we are given tasks by the select board to do. Um, there is a discussion, I've been in meetings with the select board where they talk about it, um, about the process, but it is yeah. outside of our, uh, it's kind of after us. See, and I've heard that, but in the ordinance here, it seems like it's pretty clear. It is, I don't want to, I don't even want to go there, you guys, because just because it's a long uh, discussion, but um, so it's outside of our Purview. So that's the, why we're in the select board workshop on July 21st, uh, 22, the process was mentioned multiple times in, in the discussion about Harbor Committee review. Yep. And if they want to change it, they can. <laughs> that's what I would say to that. They, if they want to change that process, they can. Uh, any other thoughts on this uh, report? One Bruce? quick one. I just want to review. It looks like we have three recommendations. We have three recommendations. Include attached floats in the <clears throat> permitting process. Yep. Eight foot maximum on the outer harbor. Yep. And all piers built are modifiable so that they can be raised. That is correct. Okay. I think. Is it, am I? Do so we want to vote on I that? think is we need to have a vote. Yeah. So um, do we have a motion? Include attached 
flows in the definite. So what I what I wrote, Mark, just so it's clear. Oh, land-based floats. So Advises the right. ordinance be amended land to attached. include land-attached land attached attached floats in Section A as projects that require, and then it would, I would just quote To get your vote, we're going to call it the Mark Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> from, from what you said, I mean, the way I interpreted that was okay. that we're including attached floats to piers. Nope. So land attached, why, land attached, land floats. attached floats. That's okay. what we're going to call them. Uh, do we have a motion on this uh, report that we have worked so very hard on? A motion that we it, it make these three recommendations. Thank you, Bruce. And forward to the select board. And forwarded to the select yes. board. I'll Do, second. Thank you, Mark. Further discussion on that? Well, this, this document uh, that was released yesterday, that's going to be amended. This document will be amended only to, um, to include the amendments that we made today. So on page four, that recommendation, the Harbor Committee uh, advises that the ordinance be amended to include land attached floats in section A as projects that require uh, permit. an application to the code enforcement officer or the town of Camden. That would be the exact wording that I would, that I would add in that. Uh, on page five, the recommendation under public access will simply say change ordinance rules to raise the maximum heights of piers from six feet to eight feet. In the outer harbor. In the outer, in the outer harbor. Great call, actually. In the outer harbor. Um, and then, um, lastly, um, uh, in, on page six, the climate change sea level rise section. Uh, that that recommendation would stay as uh, as it stands. In this. Those are the only changes. There's really two changes. Will the committee members be copied on this final document? You can. We'll, we'll copy you on the. Absolutely, I will copy you. Yeah. But we'll. But we have a motion and a second. Hold on. We have a motion and a second for uh, approval of this document with those two changes. Any further discussion? Can I just ask that in the maybe in the executive summary that you just add a sentence clarifying that we were only. We were reviewing the specific questions put to us by the select board related to the moratorium so that it addresses that there, you know, Ethan and the Conservation Commission may have raised other questions. And we're not saying those are lousy points. We're just yep. saying they were not part of our assignment. Yeah. Um, sure. Well, many of you considered them today. Um, well, we, we heard them. And from my point of view, I, I wasn't these rejecting them. So I was then, just saying they didn't ask us to talk about whether to eliminate all peers. Yep. So then I'm going to say that in the executive summary, the last sentence, note that these recommendations only address those, um, those issues dictated um, by the moratorium and uh, specified by the select board. I think I'd reverse those two. Right. Specified by the select board related to the moratorium. Specified by the select board, the select board, and... Don't we say that in the first sentence? Not really, the because we say responding summary. to a request and specified by the select board and identified in the... The, the thing that concerns me is the first board. sentence says completed a review of the town's existing yeah. ordinances. We didn't... Go, because we just talked about all the things we're not we're not going to get into. How should we do the approval process and what should this? No, there were lots of things that we I think that's just a great point. weren't getting so, to. So the last sentence um, right now and require all new peers have to be able to be raised to accommodate climate change and sea level rise and rising sea levels. New sentence in the executive summary will say, note that these recommendations only address those issues specified by the select board and identified in the moratorium. Yes. Period. So that's a third change. Uh, can you uh, adjust your, amend your motion, please? I, I can, but first, can you send me those word for word so I, I can put them in the minutes? Okay. Yeah, Does that um, statement imply that there are other issues? I don't other make, issues? I don't make any implication at all. I just say we're that this is what we're- We're not trying to say that, but anything. the Conservation Commission raised the question, should there be any more peers? Regard, and I and think we're that, saying there, we didn't. that there are specific criteria and stuff, but there's also the overall one. Do we really want to have a, 
more peers, regardless of whether you can get around them or exactly. under them or whether they Bruce, can you modify your um, motion? Did we have now three move changes? That we accept the cam the committee That's report important. on peers and moratoriums um, with the changes. Three amendments, three, three changes, amendments, three uh, changes. Uh, that we've spoken of. Mark, do you want to second that? Or? Three amendments or four? Three, three changes that we, we have identified. One to the executive summary. I'll second that. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor of that motion? One, two, three, four. Man. Tom, are you? I'm not. I'm abstaining. You're abstaining? OK. Um, OK. Did you want a further discussion? No. OK. Um, but we had one, two, three, four, five. OK. All righty. Uh, excellent. Thank you guys for that. Now, um, before everybody goes, we do have two more items, and that's why I wanted to fly through this. And I know Sophie has to go. Okay. Well, the, the big one that I just wanted to talk about is um, with regards to the storm that has just recently passed um, and we survived. I think that it, uh, I think we can all agree that it called attention to um, the vulnerabilities of Camden. And we do have, there is a proposal that is on the table, as it were, at the federal level for um, a series of breakwaters in Camden Harbor on the outer ledges and between Dillingham Point and um, Curtis Island. Um, to r recap very, very quickly, the, these projects have been proposed, these breakwaters. I think the first one was in 1919, was the first uh, approved or, or proposal. And then uh, in the 50s, there was another one, I think it was in 59. And um, uh, it was continually reviewed. And then finally in 2015, 2017, I think it was, the town actually approached the um, Army Corps and said, we'd like to start this discussion again. Um, the Army Corps did a federal interest determination uh, to determine if it was even worth continuing to talk about this project, basically. And uh, it was fairly in-depth. You guys have received a copy of that. And um, determined that it was worth continuing the discussion, at least uh, on the federal level. They, the proposal that is at the Army Corps level is uh, for a feasibility study that uh, would determine whether or not uh, these, these are appropriate and should be built in the town of Camden, uh, in the Outer Harbor. Um, this is current as of, um, I looked yesterday, and it is still on the most recent uh, Army Corps projects update, if you will. So this is still top level and top of top of mind, if you want to call it that, for the Army Corps. So they put a, a quarterly, I think it is, uh, report of sort of what they're working on. And Camden Harbor, this is the project. So I don't want anyone to think that it's been forgotten, because it hasn't, at the federal level. Um, I believe that it is our um, obligation, lack of a better term, to um, ask the select board to engage the Army Corps and to consider uh, moving forward with this next step um, of, of a conversation and determining whether or not, because there is there are costs involved in the feasibility study. Um, the numbers that the town has are somewhat old at this point. They're two, two or three years old at least. Um, we did have a meeting with the Army Corps a few years ago. I think probably most of you guys were in that. Um, the guy named Bert, 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 Burnett, I believe, Adam Burnett. Um, so um, my proposal is that we as the Harbor Committee uh, request that the select board engage in this process and engage the uh, Army Corps in this process and determine how we might proceed at the town level. Elliot. This uh, topic is included in our agenda uh, 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 initiated by you as chairman of the committee. That is correct. I'm not sure what, how much uh, affirmation that would imply. In other words, or enthusiasm is a better word. It would imply. Uh, I vaguely remember the proposal. I have zero interest in something that would go in that gap between Curtis Island and Dillingham Point. 
that's one of the prime views, and that's not where the storms come from. Uh, I think that having some idea of what would be around the area of the ledges that might protect from the southeast, which is our killer, I guess I'd be interested, but not endorsing. That's no one's, and that would be, I think that's important for everybody to know. No one's endorsing at this point. Review. We're asking for a review. Nothing may happen. They, you know, this is, there has been an, a feasible, uh, federal interest determination, interest determination, just to see, is this even, does this even make any sense to keep talking about it? Should we stop talking about it? And uh, they've determined that there, there is, this feasibility study has a great likelihood of determining that no, these, these are not uh, feasible. These are not appropriate for Camden. Um, so uh, that's the discussion that I think that we need the select board to engage with um, and, and task us with. Uh, we task, task us, no, I shouldn't say that. That's not right. So, um, so, this, so if I can give a little bit of maybe information here. Um, certainly the storm, the December 23 storm is raising the concern that of the vulnerabilities of Camden to the effects of climate change. And I think it's, a, it's going to be part of a bigger discussion on having a climate change adaptation plan, maybe really kind of thinking about how do we tackle those multiple challenges for the town. So there are challenges for the harbor, for the snowball, for the town in general. So I think we're getting to kind of this critical point where that type of a conversation needs to be happening um, at the select board, but also, you know, in, in the wider area. So I think it's, it's completely appropriate to task the select, to, to make that request of the select board. I think it will be well received because it, we need to act now. I, I think, I think if we didn't heed the warnings before December 23rd, we have really no chance now to just, you know, stick our head in the sun, sand anymore. Um, so I think it's a great idea. I think, uh, we, we should, we should start thinking about, you know, how do we make Camden more resilient? Yep, and that's exactly. That's the right so, phrasing. I think maybe the first step, because there's, there's been studies. Oh, yeah. And so the first step may be to find those studies yeah. and, and review the yeah. existing studies. And all, all I'm climate change studies? No, the, no. All I'm suggesting here is that we, and I think Sophie kind of just said it, is that we um, engage with the select board yeah. and get the select board to engage with this um, proposal that is at, at the federal level um, and um, determine next steps. And this, it's up to the select board what their steps may be. Uh, that's fine. You know, that's. And, and the data has changed. Correct. And the numbers have changed. The numbers have changed since the last, the, the last proposal, which is 2015, right? 16. 16. So data from 2015. So then in terms of uh, next steps, um, I will yeah. reach out to the select board with a, a letter just basically saying exactly what I just said. We would like to, uh, in light of the this uh, December 23rd storm, I think it is time that we re-engage with this process. Um, and we would like select board guidance on how to do yeah. that. And if you can kind of carry that forward. I would be glad to. Um, that would be great. Yeah, just for clarification, the, um, the consideration of the feasibility study is for inner, outer, coastal, like for the for the whole harbor or the whole of the It would really be for the, really the, more, well, the inner, outer harbor. It's really the outer harbor, but um, that would be what is determined. They, they've done some initial, that's why I don't want to get too worked up over where the so structure yeah. might be, because no, once no, they no. get into an actual, they're going to go, oh, actually, it's over here or over there, da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, uh, what has been done to this point is not nothing, but it is still preliminary. It was still the first step. So, um, but yeah, there's nothing um, concrete. Oh, no pun intended. All right. Thank you on that one. Um, I hope you'll never be concrete. <laughs> that was um, better than concrete. Uh, okay. Thank you for raising that. I'm point. not sure what we've just done because we had no vote. Uh, and oh, I remember being given a chart that had actually three locations of like barriers. Yep. It's and in there. We're it's in there. somehow yeah. endorsing that. I don't. Nope. We're not endorsing that. No, no we're, we're definitely anything. not endorsing We're even inquiring about two thirds of them. I don't. We're not, we're not endorsing anything. We're endorsing uh, Look into it. looking in beginning uh, this discussion or continuing this discussion with the Army Corps uh, and the town of Camden um, on this. We are not endorsing anything. And it dovetails into the, the conversation about 
the mitigation for the harbor is probably waves mitigation, and that's what the right. breakwater would achieve. So, so I think it's a, it's a nice segue to, to that earlier conversation. Yep. Elliot. I haven't read that document now for a year and a half or more. I believe that the focus of that uh, was economic. Uh, that was addressing economic issues. And I think we have a, a broader yes. scope yeah. now. That, that's how the Army Corps decides whether it's worthwhile thinking about it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although they Maybe those criteria have changed in recent years. I don't actually yeah. know. So, um, so anyway, um, all right. I think that's. I think we think a lot about a town. I mean, it's really, it's going to be a, a topic we're going to work on for the years to come. Yeah, this is a long, long, it's long topic. It's a long haul. Very long. I mean, this is so I guess the motion would be to uh, suggest that we forward to the select board a recommendation for a study of. To re engage with the. Re engage. To re engage a study of the breakwaters on the outer harbor. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Do we have a second on that? I'll second that. Thank you, Elliot. Further discussion on that? All those in favor? Whoop. One, two, three, four. Thank you very much. Or five. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Um, last item, I promise. Uh, the fishermen's floats. And apologies for you. Can go. I can go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very um, much. Thank you for all your hard work. Apologies for, uh, as you guys saw, we got these this morning. So, uh, but apparently we need to approve these or deny these we, um, prior to the January 17th meeting or something like that. So I have been told by Steve that these are all the usual players, as he said. Um, but I just want to, so we have Gary Talbot, Toby Winkelhofer. Kent Bradstreet, which I think we want to talk about, um, Brad's, Bradford Scott, Adam Scott, Barney Appleton, Mark Bradstreet, and, and that is my email. So, um, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight applications. That's kind of the number I remember. And I would propose that we take these one by one. I think we have to. Um, and just review them. I mean, should we talk about it and then maybe we'll have a vote on all of them at the end? Is that how you want to do this? Well, we've all reviewed them, right? Yeah. You guys have reviewed them. Any... Are there any objections to uh, any of them? Yes, Elliot? I, I have, I'm troubled with Kent. Okay. So okay. that's why I kind of wanted to say, like, okay. Gary Talbot. Any objections to Gary Talbot? Canned heat. Seeing none, I'm going to move on. Toby Winkelhofer, Gladys Wink. None there. Uh, Art Tibbetts. Arthur Tibbetts. <clears throat> Actually, that one I do want to just talk a little bit about that one. Sorry. Bradford Scott, uh, Webb. Nobody. Adam Scott, Mojo. And Barney Appleton, the Samantha Kate. So see none on those ones. Uh, let's talk about Ar <laughs> Arthur Tibbetts and uh, Mark and Kent Bradstreet. Those are the three remaining. Um, I did have a question on Art Tibbetts, um, and I... Arthur Tibbetts, and I think that um, on this application, it says uh, the name for the vessel is Randa, and then in, it says slash equalizer. Boat length, Randa, apparently, is 25 feet long. Equalizer is 76 feet long. Oh, wow. um, and I did have a problem with that because I don't think we can accommodate a 76-foot well, boat. I talked to the harbor master on that, and um, he, he said it's the same application. He's he's applied for for years. He never uses the fisherman's dock, but he just applies he wants for it. that option. He likes the parking space. Well, I, I guess I did want to, I don't see why we would approve. Um, the, this is a commercial fisherman's float application right here on this form for a 76 foot boat. So I would right. say that we would approve it for the Randa, the 25 foot boat, but not for the equalizer. And approve. I'd agree. Okay. I'd, I'd strike the equalizer. Okay. Uh, we'll make um, a note of that. Um, let me separate that. Yes to Randa. No to equalizer. Okay. Um, and okay, so set that aside for a moment. And now we get to the Bradstreet's uh, Mark and Kent Bradstreet. Kent Bradstreet, uh, Drake's Fortune, 40 foot vessel. 
I don't think we have a, does anyone have a problem with that? Or was there an issue with the Kent Bradstreet? Well, well, who's the one who sold the boat? He sold his boat. Did he sell, did he sell this one, the Drake's Fortune? Well, that's yeah, what yeah, Mark, that's, Mark Bradstreet said in the select board meeting on December 13th that Kent sold his boat. Oh, we don't know if this is a new boat or the old boat? Well, that's his old boat. Do you know the, that? The application is for Kent Bradstreet and Drake's Fortune. Fortune. Right. All right. So. And that is what we would be. We that's that. that's all we, we, we can approve that. I mean, yeah. whether he uses it or not is a whole nother if issue. He then, if he then has sold it, this. Oh, he's got, wait, it's got to be revisited. Because, I mean, the point is he may have sold the boat. He may lease it back. You know, I mean, we're not. Right. We're not. Like, yeah, who knows what's really. Similar to, similar to Arthur Tibbetts' application, I think we just have to be clear. It's, it's what's on the piece of paper, what's on this application. And I think we can approve Kent Bradstreet's uh, up application for the Drake's fortune uh, because based on this application that is all we know we know that this person has this boat and they are applying for it. if they change any of the specifics of this application then, then they'd have to submit a new one right. so I would say that why we don't we approve it and with a asterisk I mean I think it's true of all of them um, uh, any any boat change boat. any boat change needs well, to I'm be I'm not sure he has to own the boat no, and he, he's, he doesn't have to. He, exactly. he has to run that boat. Would, the, would a commercial passenger vessel application be approved for an operator with no boat? We don't know. He's, 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 he's naming the boat. boat. He's, he's naming, naming the application. Yeah. He said he has a boat. Yeah. I think he... Um, I, I think based on the information that we have here, that's what we're approving. If he changes it, um, you know, then, then that would need... Um, a new application and or approval. I think that's fine. Can and then, we ask that the select board find out if he has a boat? I think you'd have to ask the park master. I think we'd have to, yeah. I think, and I think it's important that if anyone changes, if uh, Mark Bradstreet here with the Lady Catherine, if he changes that vessel to something else, then we need to know about it um, and it needs a new application because it's a different boat. If he changes it to the, the guy, you know, whatever, um, that would be... And that's true of every vessel. If anybody changes a boat, it time out. We need to have a new application. Unscrew the license plates from your car and put them on another one. Whose problem is it? Right. It's your problem. It's your problem. You're the one that unscrewed the license plate. Yeah. So on Mark Bradstreet's, did we have any questions with Mark Bradstreet, Lady Catherine? That's a question. Are the documentation numbers or the registration numbers on there? Nope. Because you could buy a new boat and name it the same thing. Good. There's a total vessel length, but yes. Does okay. have a main state fishing license? I wonder if that require. No, that doesn't require. I don't think the actual boat. So, um, what I would suggest then is that we. Um, I want to ask for a vessel number, documentation I number. I ask that that gets put on the application. Um, so I would say that we. Um, it seems like we want to approve all of the applications, all of the commercial fishermen float applications um, with spe while specifying that uh, Arthur Tibbetts's application is approved for the Renda, but not for the Equalizer, and that Kent Bradstreet's vessel uh, is approved, but any chain, as with all commercial fishermen I float. I have to say that. Yeah, no, we just. Well, I, I would just, I'd flag it for uh, Steve. Yeah, just so ask. that if he sees that Kent come in on a new boat, that he's aware that Kent needs to refile, refile. a new boat. Correct. That's exactly right. Um, do we have any motions to that effect? I just said. I'll make a what motion he said. to that effect. I'll second, <laughs> I'll second what I'll he right said. To that effect. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Seconded by Bob. Thank you. Further discussion on approving all of the commercial uh, fishermen float applications uh, with the two specifications that Arthur Tibbetts be approved for the Randa and not for the Equalizer, and that um, uh, a, a notification be sent to the Harbor Master, which we can do this afternoon, that any uh, vessel change would require refiling. Further discussion? All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, and a thank you very much. Uh -huh.
Awesome. Uh, thank you, guys. That was a heck of a meeting. Uh, we got a whole lot done. Thank you, guys, for this has been a long couple of months. We've been doing a lot of work. Well, thank you, uh, Josh and, and uh, Bruce, for the yeah. document. We're adjourned. Thank you. Yeah, I'd be fascinated to know. Next meeting.